this is my happy place. And it has been for a long, long time. It's the ferry that goes from my parents' house near Manly Beach to downtown Sydney. There's nothing magical about the boat itself. Tourists and locals ride this thing every day. But really, that's what makes this ferry so special. No commuter ride on the planet offers up more amazing city views. It's routine made spectacular. Now you won't know it from my accent, but I spent a lot of time here as a kid. My Aussie grandfather helped build the Sydney Harbour Bridge, and my Aussie mom helped build the Opera House. I know, I know, the goatee. It was a phase, cut me some slack. The point is, I grew up eating things like this and worshiping these folks. My hope is that the Aussie cred will buy me some forgiveness for what comes next. This country, which punches far above its weight in so many areas, has underachieved terribly when it comes to technology. For years, talented Aussie coders have escaped to Silicon Valley to make their livings, and recent Australian government policies have underfunded science and tech. As my pap would say, Aussie tech is crook. There are signs, though, that Australia has turned on and started to retain some of its homegrown tech talent. This, then, is an odyssey to find the country's rising stars. My journey goes from the beaches of Sydney to the artsy cosmopolitan streets of Melbourne. Along the way, I get lost in a cave with only glowworms to guide me. Go diving in the ocean with a robot, and make friends with some dinosaurs. All on this episode of Hello World. Silicon Valley may be home to some of the biggest tech giants in the world, but it's being challenged like never before. Crazy tech geniuses have popped up all over the planet, making things that will blow your mind. My name is Ashley Vance. I'm an author and journalist, and I'm on a quest to find the most innovative tech creations and meet the beautiful freaks behind them. Melbourne lacks the surf culture of Sydney, but has plenty going on. In a sport-mad country, Melbourne is considered the athletic capital, thanks to its massive venues for cricket, rugby, and tennis. It's also something of a cultural capital. The elegant city gives off a European charm, its huge Greek and Italian communities, a tram system, and it takes great pride in its laneways, which are alleys packed full of street graffiti and world-class restaurants, one after the other. If you're looking to eat your way through Australia, this is a good place to start. The artsy, up-and-comer vibe to Melbourne has had an impact on its tech scene. People here have needed to think a bit different to get attention, and it's paid off. There's an argument to be made that Melbourne may be Australia's most promising tech hub, at least in terms of raw creativity. The undisputed king of Melbourne's tech scene bears this thesis out. He's Ruslan Kogan, the founder and CEO of Kogan.com, an online retailer that has changed the way Australians shop. We do about three times more revenue per employee than Amazon. He's a rich, flamboyant, controversial workaholic who finds an escape now and again at the Melbourne Pier. All right, let's go catch some snapper. Okay. <laughs> you must have been around like eight years old when you moved here from, from Belarus or? Six years old. Communism's falling apart. Uh, my parents decided to leave, which I'm so thankful for, and came here with $90 in their pockets. Kogan grew up in Melbourne's housing projects and showed an entrepreneur's spirit right from the start. 
As a kid, he ran a golf ball cleaning business, a car wash, and then a tech consulting operation. By the time he was 23, Kogan had become consumed with another quest. Man's eternal hunt for an affordable flat screen TV. I thought, you know, I can't afford it from the shops, but let me email some factories. And I thought I'd tell them that I want to order 100,000 TVs and they'll get back to me and then I'll ask for a sample and that sample was going to be my TV. <laughs> but when they started replying with all of their quotes, I saw very quickly that there's a brilliant market opportunity here. The big idea Kogan hit on was to go direct to Chinese manufacturers to buy TVs for a fraction of the going price. To get the first batch of TVs, Kogan maxed out a few credit cards and had to borrow money from his friends. You're on this lark to just get a cheap TV and it turns into a business idea. Yeah. <laughs> Australians had been slow to hop online and local retailers had largely ignored the web. Kogan dragged the entire country online and helped ignite an internet retail boom. Today, Kogan sells about $250 million of products per year, and Russellin wants to expand the brand overseas and make Kogan a household name. Should we check if we still have bait? Let's have a look. Yeah, not a single bite. <laughs> what do you think? Should we keep trying or should we drink beer? Thanks, mate. Yeah. People keep telling me they feel like Australia was a little bit late to the tech business, but now it's turning this corner. You're kind of famous for being outspoken and telling the truth on things. You know, I can't tell if I'm getting spun or, or if there really is kind of a corner being turned. Look, we went through a time in Australia where our business leaders and politicians were talking about how bad online retail is because it's going to it's going to cost a lot of jobs in the retail industry. I'm surprised they've already stopped talking about how bad cars are because everybody who used to make horse carriages has gone out of business. And luckily, we're at a point now where they're starting to realize that innovation is the future. There's only a certain amount of stuff you can dig out of the ground. Our brain power and our ideas are an unlimited resource. And if you can harness that one, then you're going to be a very rich nation.